Hello everybody and welcome to the Good Morning Cash Management webinar on P27 Payments Platform. It's called Driving Simplification and Innovation in the Nordics. This is a special webinar from Nordea where we'll be looking at P27, otherwise known as Project 27, which has a goal to create a single clearing platform for domestic and cross-border payments, real-time payments, that go well beyond infrastructure for the 27 million people of the Nordics. I'm delighted to be joined this morning by uh, Klaus Richter, who's the Deputy CEO and COO at P27 Nordic Payments. Ulf Bjornvo, who's, um, sorry, Ulf, just, uh, who's working at Visma as uh, Product Director, and Eric Zingmark, Head of Transaction Banking at Nordea. And they'll be discussing P27 from their own perspective and what it means uh, where they're sitting. Um, um, if you have any questions, please write them in the chat during um, the presentations and we have um, we've set aside some time at the end to take those. So looking forward to hearing your or reading your questions and this session will be recorded so um, we can catch up later and watch it on our insights platform and you can share it uh, if, you, if any colleagues or friends didn't manage to make it today. So without further ado, I'll pass over to Klaus to get us kicked off and um, uh, Klaus's uh, webcam isn't isn't working at the moment, so uh, we we can just hear Klaus's uh, dulcet tones. So over to you, Klaus. Yes. Good morning, everyone. Um, un unfortunately, as as Chris mentioned, my webcam has gone on strike this morning. Um, but uh, what I would like to do is is take you through a a short overview of uh, where what P twenty seven twenty seven is and and where we are at the moment, and also what benefits we see uh, to, to the different players in the in the community in terms of society, uh, corporates and consumers, as well as, uh, as the banking industry. So if you take me to the next slide. As, uh, as Chris also introduced, uh, the, the whole foundation and the whole idea of P27 is actually that we would like to reach the 27 million people of the Nordics making sure that everybody has the same infrastructure when it comes to payments uh, and we will harmonize uh, across the across the region making sure that our currencies our countries uh, integrate fully when it comes to to uh, payment infrastructure it's something that you could say that the european area went through with the euro and and sepa some years ago uh, and, and P27 uh, is now aiming to do that uh, for the Nordic region. But it's not just uh, about clearing and settlement. Uh, and I will talk a little bit about what we see uh, as the scope of uh, P27 uh, going forward. And if you move to the next slide, please. What we see is that uh, we have a foundation uh, in, in P27, which is about the, the clearing and settlement. So this is about how we move payments uh, between the banks and harmonizing that. However, that harmonization should of course filter out through uh, to all the users uh, in the industry. Uh, so through the banks and out to the corporates and, uh, and to the consumers. Um, and we talk about uh, three different layers in, in P27 when we talk about what we aim to build uh, going forward. Layer one is what we call the, the, the clearing platform, the single clearing platform for, for the Nordics. Layer two, uh, we basically aim to do a number of different things. The one thing that we are concrete about right now is uh, what we call bill payments. Uh, if you're sitting out there in the different uh, Nordic countries, uh, you are used to getting your bills paid in a certain way if you're a corporate. Uh, and if you're a consumer, you're used to paying your, your bills in a certain way. In, uh, in Sweden, that could be through uh, Autoshio or e-invoice. In Finland, that could be e-invoicing. In uh, Norway, that could be e factura Or uh, in Denmark, it could be the tailing service, etc. There are, some, there are a number of different uh, solutions out there today, uh, all working in, in, uh, in different ways. And those uh, ways actually cause a lot of inefficiencies uh, when we look at this, especially when we look at cross Nordic uh, corporate players. They have to adjust to the, all these different ways of getting their bills paid in, in the different countries. Um, and we aim to actually uh, streamlining uh, that uh, over the next uh, next few years. 
Then we also have what we call a layer three. And that is actually sort of the definition of what P27 isn't going to go into. And that's why we have sort of three different flags here, the Danish, the Swedish, and the Finnish one, because typically that is the, um, the local solutions. So what P27 will aim, not aim to do is go in and make local solutions in the different uh, countries. We are all about standardizing and streamlining this across the region. If you move to the next slide, please. What we uh, also obviously aim to deliver is that we aim to have a very uh, resilient uh, infrastructure. When we look at the, the different infrastructures in the Nordics today, uh, then they are in various stages of the, the different uh, sort of cycles of, uh, of infrastructures. You could argue that the Swedish infrastructure is, is, is fairly old and in need of modernization. You could say the same on, on parts of the Danish one. Uh, the Finnish is actually reasonably up to date because it went through the, uh, the, the SEPA update. However, we, um, we need to obviously ensure that we have a fully resilient infrastructure across the Nordics and uh, that is uh, fully protective towards cyber security and, and all those aspects that we have out there. A little bit about where are we actually in the initiative of P27. We, we started uh, back in, in 2018 uh, when we had uh, uh, six banks that went together uh, on this. So uh, Swedbank, Handelsbanken, Danske Bank, OP, SCB and Nordea. Uh, went together to uh, form a project around this um, and, and work was done uh, throughout uh, the period to create uh, rule books. Uh, we, we picked a vendor uh, to help us uh, build the solution. We actually started up a, a company uh, in, the, in the early days of 2019. Uh, we, we signed the vendor last year. Uh, the, the, the banks finalized uh, the, the, the funding of this. Recently, we have also uh, signed on the acquisition of uh, Banks Shield in, in Sweden, which is the legacy provider in Sweden. Uh, why have we done that? Is actually to make sure that we have a, a stable transition uh, of the Swedish uh, of the Swedish market where obviously there is a heavy overlap in, in terms of who actually owns Bankshio today and who owns uh, P27. We do have a few steps uh, ahead of us before we are ready to go live. Uh, there's a couple of regulatory steps. Uh, we are doing a merger filing uh, to ensure that uh, we, we can function as a company, uh, as well as we do a clearing license application with the Swedish uh, financial authorities um, to make sure that we're obviously proper licensed uh, for, for the business. We aim to have the first transaction uh, go live uh, towards the end of 2021. Uh, and uh, we also uh, are in the process of, as I mentioned earlier, running our bill payment project. We don't have a, a start date of that yet, but it will it will come after the first uh, transactions has uh, run on the clearing and, and settlement platform. Now, when we have that foundation in place, we also think that there are other opportunities out there uh, where uh, we, together with the banking industry, can choose to uh, make things better uh, for, uh, for our customers. One thing is that we obviously could uh, support uh, the, the Nordic mobile uh, payments champions. Uh, as you're aware, we have uh, uh, very, very strong solutions in, in each country, uh, Swiss in, in Sweden, mobile pay in Denmark, Seattle and other solutions in, in, um, in Finland and BIPs in Norway. It would be great if we could actually get those things to speak to each other so that they work across uh, cross borders, etc. That could be one, one uh, aim to do. And obviously, there is a lot of movements in this area also on, on an European level. So maybe we could uh, also actually work uh, in towards that. Um, 
We also know that financial crime is a major concern uh, for everyone in the in the value chain, right? Nobody wants uh, to be defrauded. Nobody wants to have their good reputation tarnished by a, a whitewash of money or anything like that. So uh, trying to protect uh, everyone against that is something that we would uh, look to, to create services around. We believe that we will have a unique data set of transaction that goes uh, across the countries and, and basically contains uh, the vast majority of volumes on a Nordic scale. Um, and that would should enable us to deliver uh, intelligent uh, information to the banks such that they can improve on their uh, financial crime uh, fighting uh, to the benefit of, of everyone in, in society. Um, lastly, um, the topic that I already touched upon around uh, the Nordic bill payment solution, we really want to try and, and push that forward. And also, I think when you look in, in the markets today, the, the existing uh, sort of traditional bill payment uh, solutions that I mentioned earlier, they are very much for your regular monthly bills. But we obviously see a lot of uh, uh, trade and, and commerce moving on to the, the e-platforms, e both on the phone and on the, on the web, uh, to where uh, a lot of shopping and, and other activities takes place there. We actually aim for the, uh, the bill payment solution to be able to work in, in those environments as well. Uh, and, and hopefully be able to create uh, smooth solutions that uh, enhances the, the shopping um, uh, online and the security of that uh, and provides a, a good alternative to, to some of the solution that sits out there uh, today. If you move to the next slide, please. So lastly, uh, just uh, on, on, on this slide, basically, yeah, moving on to this, that's what was I was going to say is that when we look at the, the scheduling of the implementation of P27, this is basically where we sit. We have a, um, a, a plan for a number of the different uh, schemes. What we see out on the left hand side here is, is a bit maybe inside out and not uh, uh, so um, uh, outside in when we talk about this, but there are two, basically two different types of payments in uh, uh, when we talk uh, about it in the different countries. There's either batch payments or instant payments. Batch payments being sort of regular supplier payments that runs uh, on a, a daily or maybe a few times a day basis or instant payments that moves instantaneously between the accounts. And we are right now running with uh, uh, SEC batch, uh, Euro instant, and we're just about to start up the DKK uh, batch. Uh, and then we, we will uh, later on uh, uh, also start up the SEC instant uh, in relatively soon. Uh, and the Euro batch and the DKK instant are a bit further into the, into the future. The color schemes here is the, the, the dark blue is when we aim to be technical live. Then as you can imagine, the banks will need to have uh, some time to onboard. That's what we call the long tail onboarding here. Um, the, the, the light purple is, is illustrative in terms of time frame. Uh, obviously it can be that some banks come on uh, the service very quickly and others need a little bit more time. Uh, to, to onboard, uh, depending on where the banks are in their own uh, development cycles. Because obviously this transformation requires quite a lot of work uh, in the banks as well to be ready for this harmonized uh, platform. If you please move to the next slide, please. Where I will just try to, to wrap up on uh, the benefits that we see for, for, for P27. We basically categorize them in three different categories on a societal level, on an end customer basis, and some for the financial industry. So on a society level, we really see that there are 
a number of innovation uh, opportunities. So when you specifically look at the, the e-commerce world, making that uh, benefit from the cross-border payments uh, in, in real time, etc. Um, and also the, the heightened level of security and, and the prevention of financial crime. When we look at this from an end customer perspective, uh, the user experience should be simplified and, and really harmonized across the Nordics. And obviously this will also enable the banks on an individual basis to start to create new products uh, and services and business models towards their customers. So some of the innovation towards the end of customers obviously will come through what the banks choose to do. And if we look towards the banks, then it's a matter of obviously creating a, a more efficient service for them and uh, reduce fraud uh, and remove all sorts of barriers for the cross-border uh, aspects of this. That was an introduction. Um, and I think we, we probably save questions for the end. So therefore I will, I will hand over to our next speaker. Thanks, Klaus. And, and, and as Klaus says there, yes, please remember to write your questions in the chat. There's loads of uh, really interesting things to come back to. So thanks, Klaus. And yes, over to you, Ulf, who's, uh, Ulf is the Product Director at Visma. Yes, thank you. And thank you first for having me. Uh, you are going to have uh, views a little bit from outside the bank world. I think that's interesting. So uh, I structured it a little bit like this, if you go to the next slide. Um, so um, I will do some uh, quick facts on Visma. Uh, I guess most of you know us somewhere, but some facts on it. Um, uh, I'm going to uh, take us a little bit through our view on the current shift in trends. Uh, I will do that, uh, I think, from a P27 and ERP vendor angle. I will explain quickly and briefly how our uh, ERP payment integration is, because I think it's really re relevant. And then I will uh, finish off with uh, uh, us as a stakeholder in uh, P27. So uh, if you go one uh, further, one slide further, please. Yeah, so some facts about us. I think the key takeaway here is that uh, we are mainly still located in the Nordics. As you know, we have uh, uh, operations now also in the Benelux and other parts of Europe, but we are mainly in the Nordics and uh, a lot and the majority of the customer contracts we do have uh, are in uh, Norway, Sweden, Finland, and uh, Denmark. So uh, we uh, represent a lot of businesses. Uh, and I think in our setting here, we are going to, uh, to uh, at least attempt to speak uh, some ideas from the small business owner, which is the uh, stereotype customer we serve from Visma. So uh, we are headquartered from Oslo. We have some 1.5 billion euros revenue. Uh, that in 2019 uh, we usually grow so we expect it to be higher in 2020 and uh, we are currently more than 12,500 uh, employees so uh, going a little bit on to the uh, to the um, uh, uh, trends and shifts if you go to the next slide please so seen from our angle, it's quite obvious, uh, obvious that we are at the crossroads. It's a dynamic and changing environment in the payment in uh, and the transaction world. We have uh, <laughs> predicted for quite a long time that uh, the uh, invoicing and payment process is uh, going to melt together. It's just a matter of time uh, before they are perceived as one process. Uh, now that is coming, uh, we see direct debit concepts, request for transfer and other concepts that actually uh, uh, supports this. And it is uh, an important enabler of automation for the small and medium sized business in the Nordics. We see how a business to consumer and mobile is changing the habits of the consumers away from net bags and into new mobile solution. That's also interesting. It's quite uh, important for us to watch because all of these uh, uh, companies we, we uh, represent that are sending invoices and we need to be uh, present in the channels where the, uh, the consumers uh, uh, receive these invoices. Then we see and we have, uh, we have, uh, uh, we are following with interest and also being uh, sort of followed by the, what I call the cross-national gazelle banks. Uh, 
they are uh, offer really much shorter time to market than traditional bags. Uh, and they're going into the business market too, as you have uh, noticed. Uh, we have examples like uh, Revolut N26, Bank Curve is something like a hybrid in this, which uh, consolidates cars, but there are all of these new concepts com coming. So the way we see it, it seems that the, the strong relationship between the businesses and the banks is a little bit under pressure. pressure. And uh, we have uh, been uh, sitting on the sideline. We have been watching this, but we have to adapt it because our businesses uh, need to, to have payment and automated payment and automated invoicing solutions. So basically we are forced to adapt to any uh, payment infrastructure businesses and consumers are preferring. But uh, we really like the Nordic banks uh, to succeed in this volatile market. And we see 20, P27 in this context. I get, li get a little bit back to it, but you can imagine that Visma as an ERP vendor should suddenly have to relate to a huge amount of banks in addition to those we have with new standards, new form and so on. It would take a lot of time that isn't directly about customer values, but which is more about the technology and adapting to new things. So, um, uh, if you go one slide further, I will uh, say a little bit about uh, how we do payments, how we have uh, organized us in that way. Uh, we have uh, consolidated the system as a uh, sort of broker on behalf of all our ERP systems. So uh, we have individual integrations to virtually all banks across Nordic. Um, uh, what we see in that is that uh, the ISO format, which is supposed to be standardized, and we were happy about that when we heard about it, uh, it has dialects, and even worse, APIs, authentication and security mechanisms, they differ hugely from bank to bank. So uh, in some cases, there is a file-based uh, uh, exchange with uh, pretty good encryption <laughs> And, and those kind of mechanisms. In other cases, it's API uh, uh, integrations where you're authenticated and security is done on the protocol level. And so it's a huge amount of, of, uh, of uh, ways to integrate them. Seen from our angle, I think, unfortunately, much work goes into integrations. Uh, and that should probably uh, have gone into uh, and be used for better customer experience. So, and then we also observe uh, that we uh, these PSD2 APIs they evolve. We, we have uh, open banking concepts uh, coming. It's, it seems um, uh, the premise here, at least at this, uh, as it is uh, perceived in the market, is that it's free. Uh, I've read it uh, end to end and I don't see that it's supposed to be free anywhere there. Uh, but it's about non-discrimination. But at least this is this is one of the premises that underlies this. We see that this area is uh, a little wild west. Uh, we have pressure from customer interesting customers, interestingly enough, not from the uh, from the banks or others, uh, that we should support PSD2. But we see that the bank is a really fresh and immature. So uh, there's just so much you can do. Uh, we see there is a lot of fintech surfacing. Uh, uh, many of them are. To put it this quite shallow when it comes to the business value proposition they have. Uh, so they are aggressive in selling, but they're not that, uh, that uh, good at everything they do, at least they are immature. And it's quite interesting for us to observe that uh, some key fintechs in the Nordics are actually partly or, or quite fully supported by the banks. That's interesting because as we see it, PSD2 actually from a customer perspective is a step back from the service level we offer today. So we think that we might have common interest here with Nordea and the banks because, uh, uh, as stated, the fintechs with the regulation there actually reduces the banks a little bit to a back transaction engine, like in, like a motor, but you lose all the interfaces, you lose the dashboard and the wheel and, and, and the gear and, and all of that. So, uh, and we rather support our customers uh, through thorough format support as we do with the ISO format and not limited PSD2 formats. So we think maybe we have, uh, have uh, some common interest there. At least this is something to, to, to explore and uh, investigate. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> I'm going to say a little bit more about how we uh, have integrated. If you go to the next slide, we have this service called uh, AutoPay for all practical purposes. On the left hand uh, side there, you see that we have uh, uh, a lot of ERP systems that are actually 
some 30 to 40 of them that are connected uh, with their proprietary format, uh, AutoPay format. And then uh, uh, AutoPay, the service, does the conversion to the ISO format and all of transport protocol and security and all of that. We are supporting a lot of payment formats. Uh, as we say, you see, we have uh, salary payments, we have a lot of other formats here, and, and uh, that's a lot more than the very limited format that you get in PSD2. When you see at the right hand side, we have this direct delivery here, and uh, it's one arrow stating ISO uh, 2022 there, but that's one of the key things I think that actually we should talk about when it comes to P27. That is not one arrow, it's some 30, 40 arrows with a lot of, of different setups. And, and uh, at least that's, that's one of the ideas that we are pursuing. That's maybe something we, we, we could do something about. So uh, coming a little bit uh, into us as a stakeholder, going to the next slide, please. So <clears throat> we, uh, Visma, with our size and with our representation of so many businesses across the markets that the P27 operates in, uh, it would really be good that uh, we would really like as a stakeholder to, to, to request that uh, that uh, P27 also has the ambition about uh, supporting a common cross Nordic API once for all banks. Because all of these integrations that we have to build with the, uh, the uh, uh, AutoPay service uh, that we have today is taking, as I said, far too much time away from things that we jointly could build customer experience for. So uh, one cross Nordic API that we don't have to uh, integrate to each bank, but that we could integrate to the real-time backbone payment highway that uh, obviously is part of the P27 initiative. That would be something that we really would like to explore further. We know it's, it, uh, we mentioned this in various settings before, we know that it's, it sounds quite aggressive, but we think it's a good idea. And then uh, we are also strong st stakeholders in, in Nordic smart government, but we see I also wanted to mention that here because uh, uh, when we get something like the bank infrastructure that supports several markets, it's quite imperative for a company and even for private for persons to be able to authenticate themselves across the Nordics. And that, that is just strange that, that that hasn't happened yet. Uh, if I'm running a business in Norway, there's no way I can authenticate myself to business and say, Malmö in Sweden or or uh, or any of the other Nordic country. I think that is also quite uh, imperative to get something in place there with the, where the banks could play a role uh, from a, a AML and, and security perspective. So all those things we we think are are a good idea. So uh, going to the last slide there, we. Uh, we propose for us as the ERP vendor to get uh, direct access to the P27 backbone uh, that we can integrate once, reach all banks. Uh, we would really be happy if uh, we could have a unified standard ISO uh, 2022 without dialects. We are relating to a lot of dialects and variations in semantics, even though, though it should be one standard uh, thing. We would. Uh, be really happy if there was one transport mechanism uh, across all banks. And we uh, finally, we would also really be happy if uh, we could uh, jointly get something like a common authentication and security mechanism in place uh, across all banks. And to finish off, uh, we, we don't see that there's any other cross Nordic initiative with a lot of banks being uh, going together in an initiative where we can address those things. We think P27 might be a, a good place to, to address them. So that was my 15 minutes, and I guess I'm ready for questions uh, afterwards as well. Okay. <clears throat> Great, yes, and please write some questions in the chat for Ulf, uh, and we'll get to those uh, right after Eric's presentation. Hi, Eric. Over to you. Hi there. Thank you. Uh, hi, everyone, and uh, good to, to have you uh, at this webinar. Um, I would like to start by just, uh, you know, uh, mentioning the or commenting on, on the things Ulf said. I, I, I subscribe to many other things that Ulf says. I think, for example, the authentication um, question is something that that we should try to solve across the Nordics to facilitate for individuals and also for corporates to 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 
to trade and, and to, to uh, you know, experience simplicity uh, in their lives. So I, I, I very much subscribe to that. I also subscribe to the, the, the importance of standards. Uh, all of us on this call want to focus on the ball, uh, what we are set to do when it comes to our respective businesses. And, and, and the more we can simplify and standardize our lives, the more time we will free up for, for doing just that. So I, I really uh, support what Ulf said. Uh, I know that uh, both Klaus and Ulf would, would present, um, you know, uh, valuable insights from their respective uh, perspectives uh, to this. So what I will try to do is to give a slightly different angle to, to Peak 27. Um, uh, I, I guess many of you have already been, been part of webinars and seminars around Peak 27 and kind of heard uh, Nordea and other banks, uh, you know, expressing our views on it and why we are participating and, and, and highly engaged. So if we move to the next um, slide, please. So I think what, what is interesting with many of the things we do, uh, banks and, and, and corporates, uh, we share the same kind of ambition. Uh, we are a supplier, a partner, a vendor to you, but we have many things in common uh, that, that makes us, and I, again, uh, able to focus on the ball. And, and one is the harmonization and standardization. This is obviously something that you as, as, as customers, as corporates really strive for in order for you to focus on your core business. But that is also very true for, for, for us on the bank side. There is no upside for, for a bank to have a lot of standards and different formats to, to, to handle. We are also eagerly striving for simplifying uh, the world around us and the interaction with you guys. So I think we share that, that urge to, to, uh, to simplify and harmonize. And as Ulf said, uh, now we have had the fact and we have had many different formats over the years and let's now together see to that we don't get a lot of dialects and ISO as well because that will prevent uh, simplicity and efficiency for, for all, uh, all parties. So, so that is something we share. Resilience and security is, is another where of course we want to have a resilient and predictable delivery. You want that from us and we want that from our stakeholders. Uh, and that also goes for security, of course. So, so the better resilience and the stronger security we can have, again, that will free up time for our respective core business. And, and, and where I see P27 obviously has a great role to play here. AML and fraud prevention was also mentioned. Uh, by by uh, allowing P27 to step in and help us to, um, uh, you know, follow any potential AML or fraud activity, that will benefit everyone involved, uh, aside from the criminals, of course. So, so I think that is an area where we, uh, from Nordea, and I'm sure the other banks as well, are very eager to see what can we do, what are we allowed to do together? Because we know that we are not, if we see something suspicious, we are not allowed to contact another bank, uh, a bank which we think might also have this specific customer as a customer, but we're not allowed to do that. And that obviously prevents a lot of, of, of proactiveness in this, in this space. So that is also another important area. Cost efficiency is, is, is a fault. And, and you know, as, as Klaus was alluding to, uh, the, the Nordic countries by themselves are too small to create the necessary scale to be able to provide cost efficient and more modern payment rails over time. Uh, Sweden is about 10 million people, the other Nordic countries are about five each. Uh, that is just too little. What we have found is that by combining the Nordic countries, we can create the necessary scale to be for you competitive when it comes to product development, but also running uh, payments. So cost efficiency, again, is something we share. Innovation and speed. Well, <clears throat> by having one platform that we know how it operates and what we can expect, we, of course, also can be a little bit faster when it comes to time to market 
the different banks competing with each other uh, for your sake, so to speak. By having that platform, by having a more simplified environment, we can speed up time to market when it comes to products and services, which I, I, I guess you would appreciate. And I also believe that by creating a high-speed cross-border railroad, we will also attract even more innovation to the Nordics than, than we have seen so far. We are already one of the innovation hubs in the world, but by providing a real-time cross-border cross-currency environment, I'm sure that we will see both from Nordic players, but also from international players, even more innovation in the Nordic uh, uh, region. Then uh, there is also a more philosophical kind of aspect in my eyes, and I think you share that, that we have a quite a high uh, level of intra-Nordic trade today between the Nordic countries. But I'm convinced that P27 will also enable and fuel even more intra-Nordic trade that will you know, benefit our societies and, and, and the people living here. So, for example, a small Danish company will have easier kind of access to and ability to do business with a company or an individual in northern parts of Finland, because it will be easier to, to execute the payments and, and, and make use of mobile or web solutions. So, so on the net, I, I do expect that we will uh, contribute to a positive development of the of the Nordic uh, intra-Nordic trade, which would be really uh, good to see. So I think you know we have a lot in common from the bank side and from the corporate side, what we would like to see more of in the future. Next slide, please. Then I was uh, reflecting a bit upon you know, what is the role of banks when we see that there is inefficiencies or flaws in, in the kind of uh, in the world we operate in. And, and I think what, what we have done in P27 together, the, the six banks, is that we have taken ownership of a situation where we all realize it's not sustainable. And, and, and I can promise you that those attempts have been taken uh, many times before. And, and sometimes you might think, why are not banks moving faster together? Well, it's, it's the same reason why not other industries together are moving really fast. And the reason is, of course, that we might have different strategies. We might be in different phases when it comes to te technology development or, or uh, technology replacement. We might be differently focused when it comes to private bank, I mean, consumer banking or corporate banking. So there are many, many factors which could potentially hinder uh, a common uh, you know, cause to, to improve the market. It's not that people are practically trying to prevent it, but rather to see how can we move forward and bringing a number of different players with different strategies into the same direction. But we need to take that ownership. And I think P27 is, is an example of that, where we again realize that something needs to be done. We are too small in each country. We have clearing uh, environments that needs to be modernized. It's costly, it's complex. And then, of course, to see that that, that team of, of banks doing driving that development is not too big and not too small. If it's too big, it becomes too slow. If it's too small, you might not be able to agree upon how the future should look like. And, and uh, in this case, we share the same vision. And that also is one of the reasons why we have been able to push ahead, despite the very complex questions we are faced with all the time. So to find a group of corporates, if it's corporate matter or banks in this case, to sh that share the vision. Another one is that has been imperative in this, in this process is that we have secured CSU support in the banks. I, the CEOs, they talk to each other on a decently frequent basis to see to that we have the full support of the banks, which is super important that all banks continue to be committed to see to that we keep the, the direction in this very, very important initiative. And that is also one of the success factors that they, they touch base now, now and then to see to that everything is kind of supported. And then one thing we have also understood over, over the process is, of course, to have the rest of the organization with us. 
So P27 for Nordea is a very, very important initiative. But it's also something that is, is in conflict, not to conflict, but it's, it's fighting rather for the same resources. We are uh, running something we call the Group Simplification Program in Nordea, where we are replacing payment engines and, and ledgers and, and data warehouses. And that is also to then uh, work and align and, and be in synchronization with P27. And that in turn requires that the information flows uh, frequently throughout each bank. So the technology guys, the operations guys, security, legal, and all of that are uh, on the same page. And then, of course, now we are intensifying the dialogue with, with you, our customers, on, on, on the progress, uh, on the timelines, and all of that, both from P27 itself, but also from us. And to see to that you are well informed, but that you also are engaged because we need your feedback, we need your input, we need your questions to see to that this uh, turns out the way we all hope uh, it will. So, so that information and engagement will continue and be more and more intensified as we go along in order for you to have as good uh, a journey as, as, as possible. Then to secure execution, and the execution is both in the banks, but also um, uh, in the banks, but also of course the, the vehicle itself, P27, to secure that you have competent people, that you have engaged people, and, and resilient people, because they are working very, very hard in P27. And, and I think Ahmed is very happy with with the uh, with the team of P27, and, and I think they have the right skills uh, to, to to do what needs to be done. But that is definitely a very important factor. And then finally, be realistic. This is complex stuff. Uh, we are going to make one of the largest mi migrations in the history of the Nordics, moving uh, corporate flows and individual flows to P27. This is complex. So we have to be realistic. Even though we're doing fine, so to speak, I'm always cautious and keep my eyes on the ball here. It is complex stuff. Next slide, please. So uh, a few thoughts on, uh, on, on, on what you could consider. I I'm sure you have heard it before uh, from your bank, hopefully Nordea. But in any case, my, my advice to you would be to continue to keep yourself well informed. Ask questions, ask for information to see to that there are no surprises when it comes to timelines or preparations. And really look at what are the opportunities for you to, to, to make use of or participate in, in, in the P27 kind of environment. And I think one obvious example, and I think it touches a little bit on what Ulf said, we are moving from more than 100 payment types to around 10 payment types, and they are certified. So of course, you will have to manage much less different payment types in the future, and thereby simplifying your processes. So how can you utilize that to the max? What things do you need to do on your side to see to that you can reap all the benefits from P27? Then of course also as we do uh, on the bank side, but also P27 does of course to plan for uh, what preparations do you need to do? When do you think that it will start to affect you, so to speak, so to secure IT resources, accounting resources, ledger resources, etc. TMS, CRP people. So you are prepared to take advantage when it suits your company. And thereby also secure the resources needed. And, and we all know that, you know, sometimes when we have dialogues with each other, you, you want to do something, but then you have an upgrade of your ERP or TMS, and it doesn't kind of fit really. So, so the, the more you know about when you would like to engage, the better for you, I guess. And then finally, I mean, reach out. We are more than more than happy to, to support you and to, to try to answer your questions. So to just reach out and we'll do our utmost to, to help you in this uh, exciting journey. Thank you. Thanks, Eric. Really interesting to hear the bank's perspective there. Uh, in the final presentation. So it's pleasing to see we've got a, quite a few questions in the chat and uh, you still have around 15 minutes to uh, add another question if you if you thought of something you'd like to ask the gentleman. But uh, let me get straight to it. The first question here, um, 
Is the infrastructure in P27 open for all Nordic banks or for the founding banks only? So perhaps that one to Klaus? Yes, so it is open to all banks in the Nordics. Uh, and for that matter, uh, all, all banks as such. And so there is no uh, differentiation between if you're an owner bank or a non-owner bank, you you participate in, in and become a customer exactly the same way. Okay, thanks Klaus. Um, do you expect that cross-border payment transactions, i.e. non-Nordic, will run through P27? Do you expect foreign banks to become direct members of P27? Who wants to take that one? So I think, yeah, I, I think um, I think multiples of us could could do that. But I, I, if I at least try on the the, the non-Nordic cross-border payments, um, so I, I would say that that is not the initial plan. Um, um, however, uh, we could, of course, uh, at some point in the future, envision a, a collaboration between, for instance, P27 and SWIFT or something like that to, to actually streamline that, but it is not in the initial plans right now. Um, and on non-Nordic banks, I can say that we've had uh, non-Nordic banks already showing interest. And there are obviously uh, non-Nordic banks that are acting in the Nordic area. I think you 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 see uh, 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 BNP, uh, you see uh, Deutsche Bank, you, you see different uh, non-Nordic banks that obviously have a presence in the Nordics. Um, and I would expect that a number of them becomes members of P27. Okay, thanks Klaus. Um, uh, another question here, someone writes, uh, I really appraise P27's thoughts regarding a common Nordic APIs, uh, payment solutions and infrastructure. As a Nordic actor, there are huge synergies in this. So how to get the Norwegian bank industry in the field or on the field? How to get Norway back? <laughs> Yeah, I mean, uh, I think everyone can ha have a view and, and I, I, uh, I think the best way to uh, to attract someone is to to be good, right, and to be uh, uh, embracing and, and open. And I think when P27 prove the the benefits uh, of of uh, what we do, I think and hope that that Norway will come back. Because to me, uh, again, a little bit philosophical perhaps, but I see a high well, not a higher purpose, but also another purpose than just running payments efficiently, and that is to strengthen the Nordic region. I mean, if you look at what has happened recently with COVID and with, with trade wars and with all kinds of things, we are two, we are two small countries to, to fight on our own. And I think P27 is one step in strengthening a super impressive and strong region, but where each country is too, too small by itself. And I think the time will prove that we need to come closer together. And P27 is one one step in that direction. So at least I cross my fingers, or cross my fingers, I, what do you say, Chris? I, I hope at least. Uh, I don't know if cross my yeah, fingers, cross fingers is, is good. Yeah. Yeah, but, but I do hope sincerely that, that we get our Norwegian friends uh, into this. Ulf, you're obviously in Norway. Uh, any, any thoughts to add to that? Yeah, yes. Uh, it seems to me that in Norway, there are a couple of more common structures, the banks had something, sort of a backbone and a common infrastructure for quite a few processes already. Uh, uh, as a vendor, we noticed that uh, we, for instance, support uh, business to consumer invoicing, so that from our ERP systems, you can invoice and it ends up directly in any net bank in Norway and, and in VIPs, which is Norwegian mobile pay solution for that case. And doing something like that in, in, in Sweden, for instance, is it's much harder. It's much more defragmented. So it seems to me that the P P27 and the initiatives, it, it, it's more of a value proposition outside Norway at this point in time. But then I would chair uh, and hope, and I think that if you do it right, of course you are going to go ahead and, and uh, show the way on, on the future, on consolidation, on the backbone and the real-time payment platform as well. And uh, mm -hmm. my take is, I'm not a Norwegian banker, but my take is that uh, if you do it right, they will onboard. It's just a matter of time. 
Thanks, Ulf. Uh, there's a next question actually directly to you, Ulf. Uh, do you have a preferred security and connectivity solution at your end that Nordea should consider adapting? That's a good question, and it's a quite technical one. Uh, from a from a general perspective, yes, we are a software vendor. Yes, we are working with security all the time, and we obviously have uh, uh, quite good opinions and, if needed, suggestions on how to 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 handle security. Uh, I think I think I'll make it as generic as that because. My point in the presentation was that it's actually more important to get one way of, of uh, connecting and building secure channels to the banks, if preferably to several banks at once in the backbone, mm -hmm. than the actual technology of it. There's so much good technology today and knowledgeable people know how to put this in together in a, in a secure and safe way and, and keep it that way. Mm -hmm. Great. Thanks, Ulf. Um, several central banks have stated their intention to reuse the target EU rails for the settlement in the future. How will all of the work with P27 and the wish to standardise? Sorry, how will this work with P27 and the wish to standardise? I think that's that one? Uh, probably one for me. Yep. Yeah, class, we'll class. take that. Thanks, um, so if we look at this, um, the, the, the different settlement mechanisms that the different the central banks have today uh, p27 basically integrates to those uh, and that will be no different when target comes uh, so uh, as it has been announced uh, in, in in denmark uh, the the danish uh, central bank will go for for target 2 adoption and we work very close with them uh, to make sure that the p27 uh, integrates well into the target platform uh, the same we have done in, in Sweden when, when Riksbank and uh, the, the Swedish Central Bank announced that they would go for TIPS, which is part of the, the Target 2 platform. Uh, we, we have uh, worked with them on creating uh, an integration uh, on, on that platform. So, uh, and, and things will obviously evolve. I think the, 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 the great thing on this is that actually the, the different countries choosing the target platform for settlement is going to create even further harmonization uh, so that the settlement part uh, as well becomes harmonized. That is probably something that mainly the banks will experience uh, on, on their side and doesn't go so much out to the corporates, but it, it enhances the further uh, harmonization across the board. So uh, yeah. we see that as a, as a good thing. Thanks, Klaus. Um... And another one actually directly to you, Klaus. What do you see as the main challenges through the implementation phase? I think that there are there are two main challenges. I think uh, what Eric uh, alluded to earlier is that this is a complex uh, process and migration where many, many parties from all the many hundreds of thousands of corporates uh, in the Nordics to the about 350 banks, as well as the central development inside the P27 needs to come together. Uh, so the complexity of it is, is one aspect. The, the other aspect of this, I think, is the, uh, the fact that there are, the world obviously doesn't stand still around P27. So, uh, target uh, two and and the central banks adopting uh, to that some places is one of the things that's happening. Uh, you you might have heard about the other uh, initiatives in the payment world like uh, EPI, the European Payment Initiative, etc. There are a, a number of initiatives that happens in the payment world um, all the time, which we in P27 on a continuous basis needs to relate to. So um, as, as Eric said, we, we, we work quite hard in P27, are quite busy. So, and, and having to deal with all those different moving parts is, uh, is the other part, I think. Are those similar challenges on the bank side, Eric, or? Yeah, I think we have that, uh, you know, what, what differs a bit between banks P27 and corporates is, of course, that both P27 and banks need to 
relate to all those regulatory changes or, or infrastructure changes happening all the time that sometimes impact our internal priorities. There are certain regulatory changes that we as a bank need to fix in order to keep our license. And, and if that comes in conflict with D.7 or something else, then, then it becomes tricky. And that's also where you need the, the support from the CSU, so to, so to say. You need to have your CEO and, and top management supporting the prioritizations necessary to, to stay on track. And, and um, so far that has worked out well. Thanks. A uh, couple of minutes to go, so we'll try and skip through these. <coughs> Excuse me. Is the plan to force all customers to the new P27 solutions and not provide present local formats anymore? Are there any ideas on when this transition transition time would end? Uh, who wants to take um, that one? So, so, so I think I think that there's both a P27 and a bank answer to this. Uh, I, I could try and do the P27 aspect. Um, because there, there's an interface between the banks and P27. And there I think, yes, the answer is that we would um, enforce a certain standard, the common standard across the Nordics. However, then the banks towards the corporates can obviously choose to do, deal with this in different ways. And, and how Nodea will deal with it, I, I think Eric um, should comment on. Mm. No, but I think back to what I said earlier, that the dialogue between us and every customer is very, very important to, to discuss the facing of this. But I think it's very, one thing that is very important to remember, back to what Ulf also said with standards and, and harmonization, and I also commented upon, unless we simplify and standardize payment types and formats and security solutions, we will not create the necessary scale to bring down cost. So if we maintain old formats, local formats too long, then we will actually carry double cost and that serves no one. So I think it will happen, the transformation to the simplified environment, but the facing of it needs to be planned carefully for, for each customer. But I don't think anyone wants to have a situation where we just add P27 to to the current situation. That serves no one. Um, <clears throat> P27 is open for all ERP systems. Are some ERP systems preferred partners and will thus have a higher readiness than others? You want to grab that? So, so I can say that, uh, yeah, well, so I can say that we from the P27 perspective uh, interact into uh, the ERP world in a totally unbiased way. So we don't have any preferred partners uh, or anything like that. We we have um, uh, already had uh, a vendor forum and we are aiming to ramp up uh, the, the, the vendor forum uh, frequency such that we can bring uh, all the players in the market up to speed on, on what is the, the different needs uh, in terms of formats and and standards, uh, etc. In this context, I would think I would also like to mention that there is the Nordic Payment Council, uh, which has been established as a body, and they are actually the, the formal body that are in control of the of the standards of the formats, if you like. And uh, we work closely with the NPC uh, as well as the vendors on on trying to get everybody to a level where they can serve. Uh, the, the corporate customers and, and, and the banks uh, best possible in this. Great. Thanks, Klaus. A uh, couple of seconds to squeeze in a final, perhaps a technical one. Is refund functionality designed into P27? So refund on the central bank level or where, where are we talking? Yeah, perhaps it's a bit of a... Uh, yeah, that, that was all we had, so I, I don't know in what context there. So. Okay. All right, but uh, no worries, yeah. but sorry, Klaus. No, no, but I, I think um, it, it's a bit hard to answer, but on the central bank level, it is designed. Um, and, and I think if 
uh, if it's on the corporate payment side, I think it will depend a bit on what each bank will allow. Okay, thank you. And um, that's about it for um, for this morning, everyone. So thank you so much for tuning in and listening. I hope you've really enjoyed it. Uh, I know I have. And, and thanks so much to Klaus, Ulf and Eric for some great presentations and some uh, some great chat at the end. If you want to uh, see this recording and, uh, and share it with colleagues and friends, then please go to uh, Insights Nordia and uh, we'll uh, upload that very shortly. So thank you very much and uh, happy holidays to everyone. Thanks for joining. Goodbye. Thank, thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you.